All right, the AC condenser fan needs to be replaced on this Civic. Come along, I'll show you how it's done. All right, today we're going to be replacing this condenser fan right here. This is the AC condenser fan. This is the radiator cooling fan, so don't get them confused. Today we're just going to be replacing this one. I diagnosed it in another vehicle, or in another vehicle, in another video. So if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. All right, first thing we'll do, we're going to get this plastic cover off. So we're going to pull this clip off and this one right here and get this thing out of the way. All right, I'm just going to use these little specialty pliers. I'm going to grab it if we can. Sometimes they're recessed down there and they're hard. But, well, that one's broken. We'll have to see if we have a replacement. But usually we can grab it and pop it up like that and then pull the whole thing out. But this one has seen better days. And this shroud is just enough in the way where I can't grab it. Sometimes the old screwdriver is better. But there, now they're out. All right, next we got to get this clip out, which you can see that one's already broken. And this one right here. And the easiest way I found to do that is we'll just take a little trim tool right here and just pop it just a little bit like that. And then now that pops it up out of the bottom. And then we can just do that. Sometimes they break like this one broke. Usually they will pop out no problem like that. Yeah, see if you pop them up like that and then bring them out, they usually won't break. But as you saw, these things get old and brittle, especially out here in the desert, and they break easy. All right, now we should be able to kind of maneuver it up and around. It just catches up under here. Gotta get it around this and there. That's how you take it off. And while I'm thinking of it, here's the new fan we're gonna be installing. There's your part number. I like TYC for fans like this. And just for demonstration, you can see we don't quite have enough room to just stick it down in there. So we're gonna have to pull this top metal bracket off. Alright, so in order to take this off, we got a bunch of bolts we gotta get out of the way first. So we'll do that. Most of these, I think, are 10 millimeter. All right, now we gotta get that one down there, and that one down there, and I think we'll pull these off the grill. This one right here, and this one right here, that should be eh, probably a five millimeter hex. All we gotta do is just loosen this up enough so we can move it up out of the way so we can get our fan in and out. All right, this one I'm just gonna use a 10, 10 millimeter wrench. So you can see these are the same and then these are different and then the ones that go in these brackets are different and we'll get this one too you want to be careful not to drop these down there and you'll never find them all right now we'll get these two and then while I'm right here and thinking of it there's two hidden behind here one on that side, one on that side. We'll have to get those two also. This is a five millimeter, by the way. I'll just get them loosened and then I'll get my ratchet.
All right, we'll get these two right here. Don't drop them like that. All right, we'll get this one over here. All right, you can see we're loose now. We can pop these off real quick just so they're out of our way. This thing is in the way down here. All right, so as you can see, all I'm doing is reaching around. I'm going to loosen that bolt up. I'll do it on both sides. I'll get that one right there. And we should be able to pull this just up enough out of our way. All right, that's what that bolt looks like. You can see it's long, much longer than the rest of them. Now it allows that to be free. And like I said, we just need a little bit of movement just to get it up out of our way. But we'll grab the other one on the other side too, just to make it a little easier. Now that we got everything loose, we just have to be careful of this filler neck, but it is, it's on a hose right there, we just want to be careful of it. But we should be able to just lift this up just a little bit and get it out of our way. And that should just be enough clearance now we can get in and out. Alright, now we need to disconnect this and then unplug, just unplug that so that that's out of our way. But if I can get a mirror right there. Can you see, we just gotta reach in there and squeeze. I don't know if I can film it. I'm just gonna reach in there and squeeze that. And then that way we can undo this clip. I'm just gonna do it with a pair of these right here. Just like that, you can see it's not broken. Now looking at the fan, you can see we got one bolt right there and one bolt right there. We just have to loosen them up. Now, because I moved this, I might have to maneuver it around, but we just got to loosen those up and get them out of the way and we should be able to pull that fan up and out of there. All right, I'm just going to reach around with an extension and a ratchet, 10 millimeter again. These are all 10 millimeters. And loosen it up. That one. And let me see if I can get this one. There we go. Now if you look through there, you can see our fan is loose. Hopefully we have enough clearance now. There we go, we can just pull it up and out. It just sits in this these two feet down there. So, there she is. Always a good idea, compare your old parts to your new parts. And you can see these look identical, we're good to go. All right, before we drop it down into place, we wanna make sure that this is clipped on Right there, like that. Now we should be good. All right, you can see that's a shot of what it looks like out. And right down there, you can see the two little feet, or the two little holes that the feet have to go into. So we just need to drop our fan right into those. All right, I'm just gonna take it and drop it down. Making sure not to mess with the fan or the plug. It's easy to miss those feet, so I like to reach down there, actually grab the foot, and drop it in. And with it dropped in place and loose, we should be able to pull on the bottom and it won't pull out. You know, it shouldn't pull out. That means our feet are in. And then you can see our poles 
they're, they're lined up. They're going to be off slightly. We might have to move the fan just a hair like that to get them to line up. But you can see they're good to go now. All right, now we can get the two little bolts back in here. You can see it's actually easier. Can you see that? Yeah, it's easier to reach around, but I'm actually looking this way. So there, I got them both started by hand. Now we can just tighten those up. All right, we'll just reach around and just snug these up. And this is just plastic, so we don't need to kill these things. They're just 10 millimeter fasteners going into plastic. Just get them snug and we're good. All right, now we can kind of maneuver this, drop it back into place, and so now it's back where it's supposed to be. And I'll reach around. We'll just snap this back in, and we'll actually plug our fan in. Hopefully I wasn't in the way. All right, so as you can see, we're snapped into place and we're clipped in. So the fan is back good and we tighten the two bolts. Now we'll get these two next, this one right here and that one over there, and then uh, then we can get the rest of them. And this is gonna be our two long bolts for these. We'll get that one started by hand and get the other one. Something like this, you want to get started by hand. You don't want to cross thread these. And you'll feel when they when they start by hand. And hopefully I can reach around with this and zip them in. And that one's in. And that one's in. Now, before we forget, let's put our two radiator brackets back into place. We just got a little tab right there that needs to snap in, but those hold our radiator. And while we're right here, we'll take the two fasteners and put them back in here. And we'll take our two hex fasteners and put them in here. So as you can see, I got those two in there, those two in here, and then I'll put the rest, these other six that have the, if you can see it, that have the tapered edge. Those are all going to go onto this metal piece right here. I'm going to put them all in loosely to make sure they all start easy, and then we'll tighten everything down. All right, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I got them all in. We got these two right here. We got these two here and these two here. Now we can tighten them all down. And I'm going to tighten the six on this bracket first, and then I'll tighten these and these up last, and this one also. All right, I got these six all tightened up. It definitely helps to have um, a ratcheting wrench, especially an offset one, so you can kind of reach in there like that. I'm sure you can get it other ways. I probably could have put a universal in there, uh, joint, and got it. But uh, now I'll get the rest now that this is tight. Um, now this does house your um, the latch for your hood, so we don't want to move it around too much. Now all we did was lift it straight up and move it out a little bit and drop it right back down. I could have marked it so that we got it exactly in the right spot, but with these bolts, you really can't, there's not much play in it, so you can't really get it off too much, but you just be aware you do take a chance if this is off. You may have to move this a little bit, but um, we should be okay. You just want to make sure that little tab is in place like that. And like I said before, we just need to be careful around this thing so we don't break it. It's only plastic. It's all plastic. Alright, and the last thing we'll do 
this will get our uh, get our grill tightened up. And all we need to do is make it snug like that. And then this needs to be sitting on top like that. Just make sure it's not caught behind it. All right, now we give it the once over. We make sure, we already made sure this bolt and this bolt were tight on our fan. And this clip is back, it's plugged in. And let's see, we got one, two, three. Those are all tight, this one's tight, this one's tight. And what else we got? These two right here, this one, this one. And these three all good to go. All right, and then we we'll grab this. Now we'll put our plastic piece back on. All right, now that we made sure everything was tight, now we can maneuver our plastic trim piece back in. We gotta pull it under the handle here. And then kind of maneuver it around everything. You gotta get it up over these little humps here. And then it slides under here. And it tucks up under the come on. There. It can be a little tricky to slide it up under there. Okay, if we did it right, those holes will line up. These two holes will line up, and then this should be tucked up under there. And then our edge should be under the grill here, just like that. So we're looking good. Now we just put the clips in. Now, because the old clips are damaged and have seen better days, I have some new clips. I have this style, and then this one over here that was broken. We're going to go with these. They're not exactly the same, but they look pretty darn close. So, we'll replace them all with brand new clips. And for this clip right here, you just it's two pieces. You just put the bottom piece in, and the top piece goes in like that. And that clips that in, and then we'll just get this one. We'll just make sure that's all lined up. We'll put our brand new clip in there. Good as new. Now we'll just do the same for the other side. There you go. That's what it looks like back in place with all new clips. And there's our fan plugged in, ready to go. All right, now we'll test the fan. I probably could have done that before I put all this stuff back together, but... Uh, all right, if you remember I use the scan tool to command it on. That's all I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to hit OK and it should turn both of our fans on. And you can see they're both running. So we're good to go. That's a confirmed fix. Uh, we can also go ahead and turn on the air conditioning and um, make sure it works with the air conditioning on. And Let's see what that AC is putting out now. And I got the vehicle on. I got the AC on. And you can see the fan is working properly, both of them. You can see we're getting down to 45 degrees, 46 degrees, so it wouldn't even get below 70 before, so that's a confirmed fix. Now, as you saw, I chose to replace the whole assembly on this vehicle, and that's usually what I like to do. Um, but there is a way you can just replace the motor. The motor is replaceable. You can just remove these three screws like I have here, take the blade off, and then there's your motor. And you can take these three screws off. You can see I already loosened it up. You can take those three screws off. And then this is just a cover. And you can take the three screws off this. And the, the motor will come out. And you got to unclip it and take the whole thing off. But you can just replace the motor. Um, but generally I don't like to do that. Because usually these things are rotted and pretty crappy. And, um, and if this fan blade assembly is damaged or... If it's um, not balanced perfectly, then your new motor is just going to get ruined. Um, so that's the reason why, for the same exact price, I can buy the whole fan assembly and it's easier to install as opposed to taking this all apart and putting a motor on there and then taking a chance that the, uh, you know, this, the remaining parts of the assembly are bad and I still got to fix it again anyway. So that's what I do. And these screws that are in this fan assembly can be a bear to get off. 
Anytime I'm working on an Asian vehicle, I gotta take screws off. I like to use Vessel screwdrivers. This is a Vessel number two. They work well on these screws um, and don't seem to strip them out, at least not very easily. You can, you can still be stripped out, but these do a good job pulling these things out. Now, of course, in this video, I replaced the AC condenser fan, but if I needed to replace the radiator fan, in most cases, I'll do exactly everything that I did here, and, and I'll do that so that I can get to this. This fan is held in with two bolts and feet on the bottom, just like this one. So I'll remove everything, do everything exactly like I did in this video. I'll pull this fan out, and then usually, once you uh, take the bolts out, you can just slide it over and then get it up right here. Usually, on most models, there's enough room to do that. Sometimes you can't do that, but on most cases, you can slide it in and out right here, and we can leave the cooling system alone and not have to uh, disconnect it and then bleed the system and things like that. So I find that easier. And one thing I want to mention, take a look at the fan blades the way they are. You can see the way that one's angled and the way this one is angled here. You can see this one spins in this direction to force the air that way. This one over here spins the other direction, so they spin in opposite directions. But they're both pulling air, they're pulling air through and towards the engine. So if either one of these are spinning in the wrong direction, which can happen if somehow, like if it's an aftermarket unit and it's wired backwards or something, this fan might spin in the wrong direction. It's not going to cool your car. You're going to have overheating problems and you're going to wonder why. So always make sure that these fans are spinning in the proper direction. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video on uh, replacing the cooling fan on this uh, Civic. This vehicle came in because the AC wasn't performing well. And it turns out, as well, if you watched both videos, you saw that there was two issues. Refrigerant low and a cooling fan not working. So as you see, cooling fans can affect not only your AC system, but it can also car cause this car to overheat. So they're very important. Anytime you got a cooling fan issue, you want to make sure we get those fixed. And don't overlook the fact that, like in the case of this vehicle, there might be two issues going on, not just one. So and that's I see that a lot when I'm fixing cars that there's more than one issue causing whatever symptom I'm seeing so always keep that in the back of your head and hey as always if you enjoyed the video or helped you out make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching